Okay, right now we're going to get to the part where we fill up the radiator with antifreeze and I'm going to show you this product that if you do any type of radiator flush and fill and you need to bleed the air out, you should get this product right here. This is the spill free funnel and I will put the Amazon link for this item in the description below so you can check it out. But with this device, you can easily bleed all the air out of your cooling system. Getting all the air out of the system is extremely important whenever you do any type of radiator flush because you're introducing air into the system. So let me show you what you get with this spill free funnel. So it comes with different sizes of adapter. This little funnel is mine. But here is a little stop stick that you put into the funnel. Now the way you use the spill free funnel is to find the adapter that fits your radiator. And then there's also going to be this metal cap. What you want to do is put this in here and this one fits perfectly into the opening of the radiator. And then put this cap over it and turn it and secure it. Now you can put the funnel on top. On this vehicle I'll be using Pre-Stone Concentrate Antifreeze. Now being concentrate you need to mix this with water and the water you want to use should be distilled water. Do not use tap water, okay? You can get it at any grocery stores or Walmart. They're about a dollar, uh, I think less than a dollar for a gallon of distilled water. So with this one I have here is one gallon. So you want to mix one gallon of concentrate with one gallon of distilled water. Here's one that I've pre-mixed, so just get a clean container and then basically add half concentrate and half distilled water. Here's the old antifreeze I drained out. Now on this Nissan Quest, the radiator takes about 1.25 gallon of antifreeze. So if you're doing it on a different vehicle, you can just measure how much came out and then put the same amount back into the radiator. Now I'm going to fill 1.25 gallon of antifreeze into the radiator. And you want to pour it in slowly and that will reduce the air that's going into the system. So we just filled up one gallon and we're going to keep pouring until the fluid is about a few inches in the funnel and that's okay because we're going to bleed the air out or some people call it burping, we're going to burp the air out and then you're going to see all the air bubbling out. Now I should mention why this spill free funnel works well is because air will always want to rise to the highest point and by having this funnel elevated above the radiator, the air will naturally come up through the funnel and escape right here. Right now the car is still jacked up and the front end is elevated and you want to keep it that way when you're bleeding the air out of the system. After filling up the antifreeze, one thing you can do before starting the vehicle is squeeze the upper radiator hose. Just do it slowly and as I squeeze it you'll see some of the air come out. Do this a couple of times and then we'll go start the vehicle. Now what you want to do is turn it to the hot setting and you can turn it to number two for the fan speed. To get the engine warmed up, what you want to do is rev the engine to about 2000 RPM for about 10 seconds. And then repeat that two more times.
while the engine's warming up, you can squeeze the upper radiator hose slowly to help get some of the air bubble out. Once the engine is warmed up, the thermostat should open so the coolant will actually circulate through the engine. Now run the car for about 30 minutes and then keep squeezing the top radiator hose slowly to release any air that's trapped in there. Another thing you should do is keep an eye on that temperature gauge. Make sure it doesn't overheat. Also don't forget to check for leaks. So let me tell you what's been going on. I've actually let this run for about 40 minutes and the engine is not overheating, which is good, but I'm not getting any heat in the vehicle. So what you can do, if that is happening in your vehicle, you want to rev it to about 1500 RPM. Do that for a couple minutes and that should fix a problem with no heat. I can tell you that for the last 40 minutes I didn't get any heat but once I start revving it to about 1500 RPM I did that for about five minutes and then right now I have heat coming out. So now that I have heat coming out, engine's now overheating, I can go ahead and turn off the engine. Take the stick and put it right in the middle and that acts as a stopper. Now with that in place, now be careful, this is very hot. You can take this out and it prevents the fluid from leaking. Now you can put this antifreeze in the overflow tank or just put it back in the container. Now you can remove the funnel adapter. Again, be careful, it's hot. Now you can install your regular radiator cap. They do recommend that if you put in a new radiator that you replace the radiator cap. Uh, I don't have a new one right now, but if I find that it's not holding pressure, then I'll go get a new one. So that's it, the job is done now. I've already reinstalled the bottom plastic uh, splash shield. And now I'm gonna get it off the jack stand and lower the vehicle. So the takeaway from doing this job is that when you are bleeding the air out of the system, make sure you have the front end elevated as high as you can. That will help get all the air out. Also, if you have the no spill funnel, that will help even more because even the mechanics at dealership, they use that. Lastly is let it run for a good 40 minutes or so and you want to squeeze the upper radiator hose periodically to get the air out. If you're able to verify that the engine is not overheating and after you run it for about 40 minutes, and the inside cabin doesn't have any heat coming out, I recommend that you rev the engine to about 1500 RPM for a couple of minutes. And for my vehicle, after I did that for about maybe four minutes or so, I can start feeling the heat coming out from the vents. Now I have done a drain and fill on the radiator a couple years ago, and with that job, I did not have to rev it after about 40 minutes. The heat started flowing in and it worked fine. But this one, maybe because there's more air due to a new radiator being put in. So I hope this video is helpful for anyone that's replacing their radiator. Also, if you need to bleed the air out of your coolant system. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comment section below. And don't forget to click on thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.